I'll be speaking on this bug of ocular tuberculosis. Everybody wants to know when to start ATT. Before I go into that, uh, just a summary of what we have discussed is that you may require immunosuppression for more than three months, whether it's interior uveitis, whether it's intermediate or posterior uveitis. So classic teaching was that an interior uveitis really required oral steroids or immunosuppression. No, for chronic interior uveitis, with the patient having recurrent attacks more than three a year, you need to be giving immunosuppressive. For intermediate uveitis, 60% are chronic. You will require require uh, require to have immunosuppression in 60% of your intermediate uveitis. In posterior uveitis, majority of them. Before I start, I'll say I, I have a different perspective to uveitis because I work in a hospital, it's multi-speciality. For 20 years, I have a pediatric adult rheumatologist. We have a uh, pulmonology department, I, we get to see all systemic diseases, so I see more of immunological disease than infective disorders. But before I, I talk about ocular tuberculosis, just to make, want to make you understand about disease and inflammation. There are two ways a body reacts to infection. One is when you are immunocompetent and when you are immunocompromised. So the reaction will be different. When, suppose cystic psychosis you have intracranial, first is to give albendazole. Now they give only steroid, let the inflammation die down, the organism will die down. Similarly, when we have viral conjunctivitis, you have the sub deposits, which are not infective, which go away with steroid. Similarly, uveitis is an immune reaction to an antigen, whether infective or non-infective, and you will require steroids with it. So, in, in tuberculosis, whether we are at the presumptive stage, can I have a pointer, please? Whether it's presumptive or probable or definitive, so the main thing is that we are still, all our articles which are coming in Dr. Tuberculosis are presumptive. Now this presumptive stage, you tend to over-diagnose your ocular tuberculosis. Here the patient comes to me with interior uveitis followed by posterior and placoid lesions. Patient is put on steroids, the moment you taper, it gets a recurrence. So you send the patient to the immunologist who gets a x-ray charge with life, uh, hyalur lymphadenopathy, has hyalur lymph nodes, send it to the pulmonologist. We have a new technology called EBUS, endoscopic bronchoscopic biopsy, where you can have a huge tissue and you can make a tissue diagnosis. This they used the ultrasound with the bronchoscope and did the biopsy. And what it came out? non caseating lesions in the lymph node. Staining, negative for AFP. They sent the, the tissue for culture. After six weeks, when the patient is already on immunosuppressive, we get a culture positive tuberculosis. So, AFB negative, by no staining, nothing, but you have a culture positive. So, the diagnostic criteria are absolutely not clear for ocular tuberculosis. We have no pathonomic finding for ocular tuberculosis. It has similarity with other causes, and you cannot get the tissue sample from the eye. And we have limited diagnostic test. Now, how does ocular TB occur? Is it hematogenous? Is it a secondary in reactivation? Or it's an immune-mediated TB due to hypersensitivity from a distant focus. I may have a pulmonary or lymph node and that the immune reaction is causing the uveitis. So it's a immunological mediated and the TB bug may not be in the, in the eye. To understand, you must understand the natural history of TB. Whenever you get infected with tubercular bacilli, you may have a primary, primary tuberculosis or you may have a latent tuberculosis. 90% is latent. <coughs> and in India, the unfortunately 40% of the population has latent tuberculosis. We've all been exposed to tubercular bac bacilli. That doesn't mean we have an active disease. And all uveitis with latent tuberculosis does not mean it is ocular tuberculosis. If you, this is a photograph from Robin's pathology, which we should study, which says that the MONTU test can come at the earlier stage before you have the casus necrosis. So MONTU test does not mean you have an active disease. So the various articles which come in, in the journals is that there is a presumptive ocular tuberculosis based on the clinical signs, investigations, the AFB in ocular fluids, uh, systemic lesions like um, Montu, radiological, extrapulmonary, and you exclude other things. But unfortunately, it is all presumptive. We tend to overdiagnose tuberculosis and miss tuberculosis when we really need to diagnose it. There are the varied clinical presentation of intractal tuberculosis as reported, but all are overlapping with other clinical pictures. Studies have shown that patients with ocular TB may not have active systemic TB, and active systemic TB may not have ocular tuberculosis. Studies shown that patients who have active systemic tuberculosis can even be Montu's negative, quantifron negative. 
it depends on your immune status. So that doesn't give you a clue whether you have at that time an active infection. It's like having a IgG uh, Ig, uh, antibody to a, a virus. So it's important to understand that the pulmonary lesions may not have ocular, but when you have a disseminated on mildew tuberculosis, you have tubercles. And the moment you start the treatment, within a week, those tubercles tend to disappear. So you may not see findings in the eye without any residual uh, defect. This is what multiple, in a mildew tuberculosis, you will see the tubercles, or you may see a granuloma, which can be highly suggestive of tuberculosis. So is ocular tuberculosis isolated or it's just an inflammatory lesion to a systemic disease? So always try to, I also try to differentiate whether I'm seeing a tuberculosis patient or a uveitis with latent tuberculosis. So if you think of this point, because all your ocular, so-called ocular TB will require steroids, if I plan to give oral steroids or I plan to give immunosuppressive, then I try to rule out latent tuberculosis. And I will find that in 30 to 40 percent of my patients, I don't label them as ocular TB. I label them as latent tuberculosis who require systemic uh, drugs. Here's a patient who develops an axial detachment, something like a Harara disease, after 12 months of ATT. And he's on ATT, and the patient is given steroids. The results, after six weeks, I stop the steroid. It recurs. I have to start methotrexate. So you can have an immune reaction in a fully treated patient. I'm at the moment following up about 30 patients of chronic uveitis, intermediate and anterior, who have been found to have some lesion of latent tuberculosis on lymph nodes, and I am giving ADT. And I'm, what I find is none of them resolve with ADT. I require steroid in addition. Besides, after giving nine months of treatment, they require chronic immunosuppression. So the immune reaction is not going to be eliminated by the ATT. The antigen is still going to lie there. Whether the antigen can be destroyed by the ATT, I doubt. So the patient resolves with all the steroids and the hump disappears. So many times I see patients who after six to three months of inadequate treatment of intermittent posterior are diagnosed as ATT. They are actually non-responders to low-dose steroids and who require immunoception. So what are these, all these tests which everybody promotes? Montu's test, Quantiferon test, and you have PCR. So what, what is the significance? Montu test is performed by two different types of techniques in India. We have no standardized reporting for, for Montu's. The various five and 10 international units are used. They are not available in a consistent uh, antigen load. So Montu's has a variable form. Montu's only tells that I have been, I'm immunocompetent and I've been exposed to the mycobacterium at some stage of my life. For children, the pediatrician tend to take it much more seriously than adult physicians. While the quantiferon test is also for a latent, but it's slightly more specific than the Montus test for it doesn't have an overlap of organisms. But the Indian, the WHO and the Indian Revised National Program has discouraged the use of quantiferon test for active disease. They have said that 40% of the Indian population is there, you will end up treating 40 percent. But in, a, in the Western countries, if somebody has Montus positive, they consider that patient a carrier and they want to treat the patient. But in India, you don't want to treat 40 percent of the population just because they have a Montu or a Quantiferon positive. You have to monitor them. Similarly, Montus test is an is a immune response to the antigen lying somewhere in the body. It has lack of specificity. Errors can be made in, in the mode of administration, the reading, the test material, and it's a cross-reaction. So due to lack of other tests, still indicator, it is still an indicator of latent, doesn't mean that the patient has ocular tuberculosis. So in Montu, it has to be approached with respect, administered with care, read with deliberation, and interpreted with sensitive discrimination. So the erythema and induration has to be dis differentiated. Whatever happens is the technician does the test, and the induration is reported as the uh, 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 equivalent to the erythema. The quantiform test has its limitation. It requires a good lab. Your blood test must be used within 6 to 12 hours, or the test must be performed, or you can have a, a false negative also. Some people use a combination to give a better clinical picture, but still, we are far away from the reality. The PCR is a very good test, but the problem is that it is not available to all the common ophthalmologists. Excellent labs at Shankaradale LVP or PGR AIMS can detect these, but the Primers available in the market are not standardized. Neither it is uh, none of these labs are approved. So until we have accessibility to PCR for the comprehensive ophthalmology, every in the country, we will not be able to use PCR as a technology to diagnose. You can still have a contamination of the air when the PCR is, is being done, and we have this quite often. Patients uh, 
sent for PCR for endophthalmitis, rip come up with certain bacteria when the culture shows fungus. At the moment, the PCR test for endophthalmitis comparing a culture to the PCR is still not standardized. We still get a lot of false positive cases. So PCR will take some time for it to be accessible to the every ophthalmologist until the referral centers who have very high standards of PCR labs. So Montus, what should I consider Montus? 10, 10 to 20, 20. I will leave it to the physician what they want to do in the overall picture. I send all my patients whom I give immunosuppressive to the uh, physician and let them take a call on. But the, what I have found is that I work in a hospital where immunosuppressive we use left, right, center, liver transplant, renal transplant, uh, rheumatology, pulmonology, all use it. And they, I have no standard indicator that if you're giving a patient immunosuppressive, should a patient uh, quantifron or uh, want to be done or based on that whether ATT prophylaxis should be given. I, I, in the one department I find different physicians giving different and I, I've tried to get people across in, in one of the DOS meetings we called people from across the various hospitals in Delhi and majority of them ex were not giving ATT to quant uh, for quantifron and want to positive patient even in transplant patients. And remember that 40 to 50 percent of the Indian population is want to positive. So should, as I mentioned, should all latent infections be given prophylaxis with steroid, with immunosuppressive? Children, yes. Adults, you have to take up with overall picture. TNF blockers, definitely you need to give ATT because that is the one drug which will un unleash the latent tuberculosis. Remember, steroids are given in tu tuberculosis in meningitis, pericarditis, renal disease, which is maximum three months. But in ocular disease, which is a immunological you need to give immunosuppressive as long as the disease is active. You cannot base your primary treatment on ATT. The various, uh, as I've discussed, this whether latent tuberculosis will be uncovered, remember that TNF 100%, again reminding you that these drugs may or may not. So what do I do? I get a patient when I start of immunosuppressive beside the HIV, hepatitis B, HCV, we've not gone through the entire battery of tests, which Dr. Neeraj Jain will elaborate. I get a CT chest done and ultrasound abdomen. If you don't have a good radiologist, you may get a CT abdomen done. And if they have positive nodes or lesion or scars, I treat the patient. If they are not, I don't. So I don't go by the Montus and the chest x-ray. I go by the CT chest because you may have an old lesion, uh, a scar, but the CT chest and ultrasound abdomen really picks up cases when you don't suspect them to have tuberculosis. In your practice, I would say if the Montus is severely positive, family history, heel lesion x-ray, get a CT scan done. Uh, that will give you much better clues than uh, uh, Montus or Quantiferon. Now, how do you manage the latent tuberculosis? Books will say single drug INS, no, we have resistance. Various parts of the countries have different resistant patterns. In North India, 20% of the patients are resistant to INS in infampicin. So, in our hospital, we tend to give a full four drug therapy if we are prophylaxing, not two drugs, and we give them to six to nine months. Two drugs, three months, some people give four, uh, Bombay, as Dr. Neerajan told me, they give a single drug, a lot of the hospitals. But in North India, if you see the reports, uh, single drug will create tremendous resistance for ocular tuberculosis. So it's important that you always look out for latent tuberculosis, use immunosuppressive, and the steroid is unresponsive for more than three months. And I prefer to consult a physician in all my cases. Thank you very much.